Francis was always asking for ideas, ideas, more ideas. Give me the wildest, most far out things you can. This was a notion that came from the Cocteau, Beauty and the Beast, which was also one of our references, that uh, Dracula, when he hears about Mina not wanting to be with him anymore, gets so anguished that he kind of starts to steam and, and his emotions take on this sort of uh, physical property. I would just, I would flip them and then rather than having sit right next to each other, just bring him around Slightly a little. Facing. And then slightly the facing, and then it sort of achieve to that. Okay. No problem. We're always looking for connections. With a visual layered montage, certain shapes echo one another. So you have a shape of a glass, and that's a circle if it's seen from above. And then naturally, you think of what else is circular, and an eyeball is circular. So you put those two things together. And those are all ideas that just came about in the process of boarding and looking for little connections that you can weave together. A lot of times Roman knew the technique he wanted to use, but it would take some back and forth and thinking about it to see exactly how he was gonna achieve it. Early versions of the opening were real kind of naturalistic and straightforward, and they never quite seemed to work, and Francis wanted to bring something more to them. This was before the idea of the silhouettes really came in, and one of the issues was, you know, at that time we didn't have the, the fantastic echo design of, uh, of Dracula's armor, which kicked things in a whole new direction. And you know, we were just drawing him in this lame kind of wolf head helmet. And that was kind of like, you know, we gotta do something to get this onto a different level. The silhouette idea came up not too long after that. and was a lot more striking and kind of original. I always thought of it as a way to kind of start to clue the audience in as to the visual uh, techniques that he was going to use through the rest of the film and sort of to distance distance the audience from the idea that this was literal reality. The warrior prince is surrounded by his men. They realize they are victorious. He gets off his horse and kneels, removing his wolf helmet. We see the young face of Dracula. So the score was pretty instrumental in being, more than anything else, I think a reference point of knowing what your original intention was. The different thing about Dracula was that so much of it was about evoking a feeling, trying to use specific sets of tools the visual influences, the theatrical. There were so many different boxes that we've had that we could draw from at any given time. And it was great because it was, you had really, you had kind of limitless freedom, but you also had a direction that you knew you were moving in.